Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV, where we are going to talk about how to get your pieces to a performance level. So this is the final 20% of learning a piece. The first 80% is pretty easy to figure out. I mean, it's when you learn a piece start to finish, you can play it pretty well, maybe there are a few mistakes. Most people don't have trouble with this part, but the, the struggle can be that final 20%, how to take your piece from like pretty good to performance level to awesome. And I just wanna make a quick note, not every piece that you learn needs to get this performance treatment. That would be kind of overkill. So it's a good idea to always keep a fresh rotation of new music so that you're not just like sitting with the same pieces for months, because that can get really tedious and boring. So with my own students, we'll keep a lot of pieces just up to that 80% level. And then we'll select the special few to get that performance treatment, to get them as close to 100% as we can. These would be pieces you would do for a performance, for an exam, or you know, you just really love them and you wanna be great at them. So let's get started. So there are three main phases in a piece's life cycle. So you have the beginning phases, which is just like kind of the early learning stages. You have the developing phase where you can play the piece pretty good, but it's not quite up to speed. There's some snags still. And then you have performing level pieces. So it's it's polished, it's at performance level. You can go play it at a recital and you know not feel horribly ashamed. I'm basing these three categories entirely off of uh, The Musician's Way, which is a great read. I just wanted to share that with you. This is not my like original idea. Getting pieces to a performance level can take a really, really long time. So say that it takes you a month to learn a piece, start to finish with the right tempo, you're just making a few mistakes, you're playing it pretty well. So that 80% level that, that we were talking about. At this point, you'd be able to move that piece from the development category into the performing category. But it doesn't it's not like you just kind of stop practicing there and then once something's in performance mode, you just play through it a couple times once in a while to maintain it. Just like we have ways that we practice beginning pieces and we have methods and ways that we practice developing pieces, we need to think about the ways in which we also practice performance level pieces. For a piece to get that sheen and polish necessary for performance, you'll want to consider the following things, which we're going to talk about in turn. So it needs time to marinate on the back burner. It needs regular maintenance. Uh, you need to practice it in a variety of different ways to both get to know it better and to keep it interesting and fresh. You want to pay close attention to details, things like staccatos and accents, just not letting yourself be a robot, basically. Do section by section work. So actual practice, not just like playthroughs and that's it. But you also want to do full run throughs and you want to be diligent about not making mistakes. So a quick note before we dive into these topics, it's important that your pieces be at a variety of learning stages so you don't get overwhelmed. So what I mean is if you're learning three pieces, maybe one of them is at performance level and maybe another one is just beginning and another one is developing, I think it's better to have pieces staggered like that than to have like three pieces all at performance level because it keeps things more interesting and your, your practice session is less lopsided and it'll end up utilizing multiple parts of your brain, you're less likely to burn out from practice. I'm not super savvy with brain science, but there's something that's really magical and special that happens when you allow a piece to settle in your mind. So if you learn something in a week and then you spend about a month returning to it and lightly maintaining it, doing a little bit of practice, but not like really heavy work, you'll become more at ease with it and more comfortable with it. It's like getting to know a person. So when you first meet someone, it's more likely that you'll be a little bit more self-conscious. Maybe you'll hold yourself back, but as you get to know them, you become more open in your expression and more free with them and less uh, reserved. And the same thing happens with your music. So I don't think that there's like a magic number or amount of time for how long to let a piece marinate. You'll, you'll just sort of know once you start feeling more comfortable with it. So for me, it's usually in that like three to six month ballpark. So I'll be able to play a piece pretty well before that point, but it takes that like extra three to six months for me to really start feeling okay with the piece, like really at ease with it, uh, a lot less like tense when I'm playing it. Once a piece is officially switched into performance mode, it's gonna need regular maintenance. You can't just stick it in performance mode and then forget about it. So if I'm doing, just for simplicity's sake, if I'm doing a one hour practice session, then I might devote 10-ish minutes or so to maintaining this performance piece. And 10 minutes gives me time to play through it a couple times, as well as work on some of the other practice techniques we'll be talking about in this video. A performance mode piece isn't necessarily gonna need the same heavy mental focus that learning a new piece needs. So, I mean, that's not to say you can just 
space out and play it a couple times and call it a day. But where learning a piece might take 30 good minutes per session, maintaining a piece I don't usually spend as much time on. I'm gonna make another comparison with meeting people. So when we first make friends with someone and we meet someone, the experience is novel, it's fresh, it's exciting. And then as we get to know them, that softens into an experience that's a lot, a lot more like at ease and relaxing. And then it could even, with more time, turn into lethargy or even boredom. So the same thing can happen to your music. You might start getting bored with a piece that you've had for a while. You might start craving that newness again. So by all means, you can go out and make a new friend or like in this case, make a new, make friends with a new musical piece. But I think that what's even more important when we're working on these, these pieces to master is learning how to find newness and find excitement within that piece. I just pulled up a random Bach sheet on the screen here to use as my like kind of doodly example. So what can you do to avoid getting bored with your performance mode piece? Say it's this Bach cantata that you want to maintain. So you can switch up the way you practice it, get to know it in different ways. So for example, I memorize pieces really easily, but an interesting mental challenge for me is to try to play a memorized piece hands separately because a lot of the times I memorize the motions hands together, but once I split my brain hands separate, I kind of get lost and it, it, it basically shows me that I've put a lot of stock into muscle memory, but not as much stock into memorizing the actual music components. So. Hand separate practice is a really great way to strengthen your memory and understanding of a piece. There's other things you can do, like you could try playing super, super slow. You could try dividing the piece into like, I don't know, maybe like two bar parts. And then you could play like from the end of the song. So say, pretend this is the end of the piece. There's like a double bar line and, and then it's over. You could start from this two bar chunk and then do this two bar chunk and then just kind of work backwards like that instead of forwards. Um, you could try to master like one tiny ch technical challenge at a time. Like say, say this bar, it, it looks kind of brutal. So say it's really tough to play. Um, you could just spend 10 minutes on that bar and master like whatever challenge, like maybe there's a fingering issue that you're having. Another thing that you could do is play with like entirely different expression. So if you're supposed to play this part loud, maybe you try playing it quiet and see what comes out. Just little experiments like that. Just because a piece has gone into performance mode, it doesn't mean you get to shut off your brain and just play on autopilot. Pay really close attention to the music when you play. Is there more you could be doing? Is there like a dynamic you might be missing? Maybe there's an accent you could be doing a little better. Maybe there's like a crescendo or diminuendo you could express more. Maybe there's like a slur that you're interrupting or like a staccato that isn't very clean or you know, you get the idea. Pay attention even when you know a piece really well. Carefully combing through your music every time you play is a way to avoid robotic playing as are the things that we've already been talking about. Because when we play on robot mode, we're like not actually practicing at all. It's basically the equivalent of just spitting out lines of code. When we practice like a robot, we're not gonna get better because we're not thinking, we're not engaging our mind. So it might seem that learning a new piece from scratch is gonna be more challenging than working with a piece that you already know, but but if you're, if you're practicing intelligently, you should be able to find things on a daily basis in your piece that, that are, are new and fresh challenges. Maybe it's a dynamic you've never mentioned, never, uh, sorry, maybe it's a dynamic you've never noticed. Maybe it's an accent you, you haven't been playing. Maybe it's a staccato that could be a little bit more staccato-y, like all kinds of things like that. One mistake a lot of people make when they put pieces on performance mode, and I'm guilty of this too, is to only do full playthroughs, okay? So you can play a piece pretty well, so then what you call practice is just playing through it a couple times and then calling it a day. Then you put it away and then you move on to your more exciting pieces. And I think I even still have to be conscious of this and stop myself from doing this. It's just, it's tempting. But the problem is, is that we're never going to iron out those kinks in the music unless we do deep section by section work. So playthroughs are good, but so is isolating parts and really ironing them. In order for a performance piece to get that polish, like attention to detail, good accuracy, and so on, we need to continually refine it. It's practically impossible to refine anything in a piece when you just play it through a couple times. So what you can do is you can divide your music up into logical parts, like maybe every, you know, two lines or maybe, or two bars or maybe even four bars, uh, every line, every half page, whatever it is. Um, 
divide it up into into pieces and then dedicate yourself to fully working on one of those pieces. So maybe maybe in a practice session you focus on just the first line of music. That is perfectly okay. Maybe you you spend most of your time really refining this first line and then you do a couple playthroughs. That line of music is going to get much better. And if you keep doing the same thing day after day, you're going to find that your your piece as a whole gets really really better even just a couple weeks later. So that brings us to the point of full run-throughs. Full run-throughs I feel like I'm giving them a little bit of a hard time in this video, but they're not pointless. They're super important. It's how you kind of merge all of the skills you're learning and fuse everything together. So we don't want to spend all of this time focusing on like one line of music and neglect to step back and see the big picture, the macrocosm. You want to balance your focus section by section work with a couple deliberate playthroughs. And together, the two approaches will make a big difference in the polish of your performance piece. The final point I want to make is to get really diligent about playing your pieces with no mistakes. And that's not to say like mistakes are inevitable, they happen, and the quest for perfection is a doomed one. But that being said, we want to be really careful that we're not practicing mistakes. So say for example, you hit a certain bar in your music and there's a note that you hit wrong a lot of the time. What you're doing when you hit that wrong note consistently is you're practicing that wrong note. We don't want to practice the wrong notes. We want to practice the right notes, which means I want you to be extra careful when you're playing that you're not training yourself to hit the wrong notes. If you find yourself in this situation, spend some time getting the right note. Even if you have, to, you have to like cut the tempo in half, even if you have to practice hands separate or simplify in other ways, start practicing getting the note right. We want the right note to be practiced more than the wrong note. So feel free to be really, you know what, I'm going to grab one of my books and demonstrate. I want you to be really brutal with this. So if you hit a wrong note, practice hitting the right note at least three times so that the right note outweighs the wrong note by a factor of three or more. And then you can keep playing it as normal. So I'm just, uh, I pulled something out here uh, and I'm just gonna make a mistake. Okay, so I made two mistakes. I moved to the wrong spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow it down and kind of practice where I went wrong. And I'm gonna do it again. So now I'm going to do it again a little faster. Okay, so I've done it three times right versus the one time wrong. And again, it's a fine line be between becoming mistake-a-phobic and just being like diligent, but it's a really important point to consider when you're practicing. And that is the conclusion of today's episode. I hope you found something of value in it that you will you know, that you can enact to benefit your own piano playing, music performing life. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of you who do that. And subscribe if you like the content and you wanna keep up to date. We do new videos every Tuesday and Saturday for those of you who are like new to the channel. And uh, we cover a whole bunch of different topics, everything from Q and A sessions to practical, like how to practice tips and music history and all that kind of cerebral music theory stuff as well. So stay tuned for that. You can come visit me on social. You can come say hi on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, the like. And thank you so much for everyone who helps make these videos possible. We really appreciate all of your time and enthusiasm and kind words. So take care, catch you guys next time. Whoa! Kicking you around.